Hi, good morning, my good students. How are you today? I want to welcome you to class. Let's sit down quietly, get writing material, and let's start digital class today. So we'll be considering elements of prose. Elements of prose. I remember, my name is Dakbo Orimoloi. I'll be taking you through the class for this morning. Welcome to class once again. Let's examine our objectives for this class. For this class, after this class, you should be able to recall all thoughts about prose in the previous classes. Mind you, we've discussed prose before now, so we should recall everything about prose. Then you should be able to state some elements of prose. Yes, discussing the, the elements today, you should be able to state them. You should be able to explain them also. You should be able to explain these elements. And number three, sorry, number four, the last one, you should be able to state their importance, how important they are in prose work. You have to state their importance in prose work. Then let's do a brief correction to our last assignment. Last assignment I told you to go and explain the following types of poetry with examples. I said explain them with examples. I told you that ballad is a kind of poem that is danceable, something you can dance to, is one of the oldest forms of poetry which involves a little bit of dance, like you, you tell a story and the story is danceable. Then I gave you examples as uh, old moonlight tales that our mother used to tell us then, how uh, they used to tell us the moonlight tales, and uh, the dance part of it is, is really the ballad. Then I told that old is a praise poem. It is meant to praise a person, praise an event, a praise achievement. It's, a, it's simply a praise poem. And we have stuff like, poems like Ode to the Grecian Un. Ode to the Grecian Un. This, are, this is one good example, a very common example of a hood. You don't say an ode, it's a hood, please. Then lyric now. Lyric is, I told you, every good song has a lyric. These are wordings of songs that can be recited as poems. They are wordings of songs. There are always deep wordings of songs, not the Olamide or the Shako Shako lyrics of songs. There are lyrics of songs that have messages in them, and uh, they can be termed and tagged as poem. They are called lyrics. Then dead. Dead is a poem for the dead. It's a poem recited at the death of somebody. A poem recited at the death of somebody. Then for lullaby, lullaby is that kind of poem our mothers compose to rock babies to sleep. Every mother is a lullaby singer. Some people call it lullaby, it's lullaby, it's a lullaby singer. They compose a song for us to rock us to sleep. They will start singing the song and rocking us gradually so that we can fall asleep when we were babies. So this kind of poem are the various kinds of poem you have under poetry. Let's do a brief revision of our last discussion on prose. Last time on prose, I said prose is that kind of write-up that exhibits a natural flow of speech and grammatical structure than a rhythmic structure. But that is, it doesn't have rhythm. It's just a free flow of speech that has grammatical structure. And uh, simply put, I said, a prose work is any form of writing that is written in chapters and paragraph form. Note me, any form of writing written in chapters and paragraph form, that's a prose work. And I told you we have two types. We have the fiction, yes, we have the fiction, and we have the non-fiction. And for the fiction, I said the fiction is that imaginary, that imaginative kind of prose product of imagination, product of daily life experience, write out a book, write out a, a prose work based on your creativity or imagination that is under fiction. Why non-fiction is true life story, what you've witnessed, what you saw, what you've been through, true life story. And I gave you different examples on, on them. I, I gave you novel, novella, I said the novel is a long narrative that is more than 35,000 words, yes. Then when I said it's short, short, not up to a novel, 
and more than a short story. I told you a short story is that kind of write up that has only one plot. That story that has only one scene and very few characters. Then for non fiction, I said biography, which is the story of a person written by another person, the life story of a person written by another person, maybe because the person is dead or cannot write by him, himself or herself. Then the autobiography is your story written by yourself. Autobiography is a life story of a person written by himself or herself. The memoir, I said memoir is the story of a person over a short period of time. Your story over a short I told you about the story of Obama Sanjo when he went to jail. He wrote a book about his life in jail. The same thing with Walsh He wrote a book about his childhood, which he titled Child Ake, Memory of Childhood. You can get a book and read. Let's go to what we have for today, elements of prose. The first is, let's see how important, how very important the elements are to prose. The first thing is that this element distinguishes, this element distinguishes prose from other literary work. The main thing that makes prose unique from other literary work are the elements in it, the elements. Then, these elements come together to ensure prose works are believable. Without these elements in prose, it will be vague and a body of dragons. But with these elements, we know prose work are believable. Then, they give coherence to prose work. They make the stuff coherent. They give coherence to prose work. That is one of the importance of this element. Then, let's start with the first element, which is plot. Simply put, plot is a sequential arrangement of events in a prose work. How events are arranged sequentially. It's coming from the beginning to the middle to the end, or from the end, you cover to the beginning to the middle. That's why we use it. That's why we have the usual flashback. If you are very good with, with Nollywood, you know what flashback is already without even telling you. So this, so this element is that which illustrates the sequential arrangement of events in a prose work. And you see it here. Here, the first thing is the exposition. We are exposed to the conflict. There's always a conflict in every prose. Even when it's comedy, there's something that is the reason for the writer. Then we go gradually. It rises. It goes up, up. See, it gets to the climax here. Arrangement. Then, like the law of physics, anything that goes up must come down. It starts falling. Things get resolved. So we get to denouement, or we call it resolution. We call it resolu resolution. Resolution when things get resolved. So sequential arrangement of events in a prose work is the plot. Then we have conflicts. In every literature, there is always a struggle between two opposing forces. The conflict is. The reason, the major cause of struggle in the prose work. There's no way you can have a prose work without a conflict in it. I've showed you here. It rises to the climax level, then it falls. So the conflict is the struggle between two opposing figures in the prose work, and especially between the antagonist and the protagonist. And we have two types of conflicts. We have two types. There is one that is internal. This internal one has to do with what is inside of the major actor. The struggle for good and bad, vices and virtue to exhibit themselves in the life of the main actor. It is always the struggle within to either be good or be bad. That is the first one, and that one can lead to the downfall or to the excellent performance of the protagonist. That determines a lot. That is internal. Then there we, we have the external one, which is motivated by happenings around, happenings around the person. This, these are do, has to do with 
events around him or her that will either instigate his downfall or promote his good works. So this is, I said the first one is internal, then this one is external. Forces around struggling with him to either be good or bad. Then we have the protagonist in every work of art. The protagonist is the lead character or central character or we call them major role player. Remember those days? We should call them bulls. They will tell you, the days of, that, of Terminator, they will tell you bulls don't die in films. We call them bulls because we, don't, we, don't, we have a very shallow knowledge of, what, of who they are. They are not bulls players, they are protagonists. They, they, they play centers around them. At times they are referred to as hero by the audience. Or they refer to them as, as hero. And like I have here, is a main character in a work of art and is involved in the central conflict. The conflict centers around him. Centers around him. Then we have the antagonist here, like protagonist. Antagonist is the opposite of the protagonist. This person is always working constantly to bring down the protagonist. That's what we call, we call him or the opponent, the competitor or rival of the protagonist. And those days we call this one actor. We'll tell you, both don't die in film. Only actors die in film. That's one major error we had in our head those days. So this is always against the protagonist. Is a very mighty force that opposes the protagonist. And you can see a very good illustration here. This is a protagonist standing in front of this small animal is a character who stands in opposition to advancing the primary goals of a plot he doesn't want the protagonist to achieve anything meaningful in such a in such a work of art you can see what i've put here as an illustration then we have suspense this is something I can say some of us know. This is the intense feeling that the audience go through while waiting for the outcome of certain events. That is, you are eager to see what the next event will lead to. This is used to sustain the interest of the reader or viewer in a prose work. That's, that's the usefulness. Usefulness now. It is used to sustain our interest. You want to see what is next. You are so eager. That suspense. It keeps your interest glued. It keeps your, you glued to either the TV or to the book you are reading. And we have the characters which are developed through the word characterization. It's a means. This character is a means whereby the characters are presented to the audience. You can see it here. It's the way characters are presented to the audience. I can be a Christian in my real life, but to the audience, I can be presented to them as an herbalist just to fulfill the plot of the novel. So the way the characters are presented to the audience is the characterization, different ways. They can present a bank manager in real life as a gateman to the audience. It is all about fulfilling the plot of the novel. And we have audience in some ways. We have the flat audience and we have the dynamic audience, which is a round of the audience. This flat audience is stereotype. That is, it has limited role. His actions are not. How do I say it now? His actions can be taken away from the book, from the film, and the seminal full. He doesn't play much role. He doesn't play much role. Although his roles are important, but they are not eye catching. They are not eye catching. They are not eye catching. What well, dynamic person, dynamic character plays an important role in the sense that. The, the plot revolves around 
him or her. That's who a dynamic, a dynamic character is. Like the flat character who is not eye catcher and who is always stereotype. You can see the difference now. A flat one has one or two character traits. That's a flat one. But the round one has many character traits. Then these ones, the flat one, they don't have depths. I usually have simple rules, but these ones, they have various qualities and complex as a person. They are complex as a person. If a flat character can act a bad boy, act a clown, and that's all. But these ones can act many roles. They can act many roles in a prose work. Then we have the theme now. The theme is a central idea or main message. Central idea or main message we want to the prose work is trying to pass across. It's a central idea or main message the prose work wants to pass across. And the theme can these are 12 common themes in literature. Man struggle against nature, man struggle against oh, these, these are main messages that African or European literature centers around. Centers around. Then we have the setting. Setting is the time or place of event. Time or place. I see it's a time and place of event where the event is situated, where the story takes place, the time and uh, place. And uh, this time has to do with a lot of things. It can be the era, the dispensation, and stuff like that. Then the place has to do with the physical setting, the locale. Let me give you the spelling. The locale. The place has to do with the locale, the location. I will say in film, location, they will ask you where is the location of that film. The location is a place. Then we have five things peculiar to setting. Number one is, I said, the place where the story takes place. Then, number two is the time, the era. Is it, is it the, 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 the 1990s? Is it, is it the 2000? Is it the 1980 something? Then the mood, the environment. The, the mood, the atmosphere is the story discussing love. You know, you can't discuss love in a church. You can't discuss love story in a church. You either go to a nice hotel or a bar for such a, a, a film. Then it was about sadness, calamity. It would be very, very unpresentable to discuss such a thing in a church. Or in a nice apartment, then the weather, the weather also, the climatic condition, as also put in place. Then the social, the social life of the people, their dress, their language. Imagine you are shooting an India film now, and you start putting suits, tie, and shirts with trousers on the actor. That is inappropriate. You are discussing, you are setting a film in 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 the Yoruba land. Try to put. I will start quote on the people. That is inappropriate. Then we have diction. Diction is the choice of words. Look at this. The choice of words. How words are presented in the prose work. Either simple, complicated, or complex. It's the choice of word and style of expression. Very important. Style that the author makes use of. And uh, it has to do with class. The, the, it has to do with the audience you are trying to reach. Your target audience. You are writing a book for nursery school students. You have to use very simple language. Writing a book for primary school students. You can advance the language a bit. You're writing a book for university students. You know you can give them complex diction. And they will definitely understand that. So your choice of word or style of expression is your diction as a person. And I, like I said here, in selection of words, selection, our words are carefully selected to pass across your message. And I told you, you must consider your audience in this. You must be very, very conversant with your audience so that you don't speak out of their level. You don't speak and write out of their level. Then, many ways of reaching our audience, ways of reaching them. If it's an informal setting, informal, you can use words like this. But if it's formal, you have to be formal. Like I have, like I do teach you in formal letter. 
academic setting or literary setting, it, it, the, the stuff has to be, the writing has to be formal. But mostly in prose work, we use the informal setting so that we can express ourselves freely. In conclusion, I told you that elements of prose distinguish prose from other literary works. Without them, prose is as good as any other literary work. But with the elements, it stands out. And I said, they come together to ensure prose works are believable. When you don't have elements, when the elements are not well used, when the elements are absent, prose works are not meaningful. They are not meaningful. And lastly, they give coherence. That means they unite words, unite thoughts in in prose work. They unite thoughts and unite words in, in prose work. Then I will advise you work on the following. You state and discuss the following elements in case next class. You can reach me by mail, send your answers to me by mail, or wait in next class before I come for the correction. Or but before then. This reference material, please try and work on them. They are for you to learn and increase your knowledge of the topic. Like I do say in class, the highest teacher can give you is 70%. Yes, we cannot offer more than 70% in a class because of time constraint and other things. But as the diligent student, you can take your time to get more knowledge. Do research and get more knowledge about the topic. Till we see you next class, stay focused, study your materials, do your assignments, and remain blessed. I love you all. Thank you for coming.